What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Wanted to hop on here real quick, preview the Steelers preseason finale against the Detroit Lions. It should be a pretty good tune-up, man. I think Dan Campbell has a really strong roster over there, regardless of how much he plays his top guys, a team that went to the NFC Championship game last year. You know, at this point, I feel like most of the roster spots on the Steelers, uh, 53 man is probably etched in stone at this point, pending injuries. But it's getting late for some of these guys to make that final push for the 53, probably looking at, you know, those last four or five spots still up for grabs. So sounds like the starters, at least on offense, are going to play in some capacity, which is probably a good call, uh, given how dire things have been over there um, through the first two preseason games. You know, before we get started, just. If y'all could, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. All that stuff's greatly appreciated on my end. Also, let me know who you guys are most looking forward to seeing play uh, this weekend. As always, if you want even more exclusive content from me, consider becoming a channel member for even more film rooms, early access to what goes up on the channel, all that good stuff. So, you know, let's kind of get started here. I think the number one thing that I'm looking forward to seeing tomorrow is just signs of life offensively from the first, second team. I don't need Super Bowl vibes. I don't need to see, you know, them light it on fire like they did last year during the preseason, anything like that. But I just want to have a little bit of confidence on what they're trying to do on that side of the ball, um, you know, before they head into Atlanta for the opener, uh, considering, you know, how disastrous, you know, things have been at times through the first two weeks. Another thing that I thought um, the All-22 reveal was I, I feel like Arthur Smith actually called a fine game last weekend. Um, I know I was a little bit harsh on him in the post game. I don't really get into like preseason play calling because it's, it's so basic. You're, you know, really only running your like base stuff. But at the same time, like you need to put your guys in good positions to succeed and show their skills and all that stuff. Uh, but I thought, you know, he called a fine game better than I gave him credit for. Uh, guys were open. Y'all know me, man. I'm a straight shooter. Um, I thought the quarterback play last week when the weekend was rough, full stop, especially for a preseason game. Guys were getting schemed open, I thought. Um, we'll get into the protection side of that. But need to reduce negative play, stay out of third and long, um, and just generally speaking, get better quarterback play um, against the Lions, in my opinion. So I'd like to see Russ for a quarter or so. I'd also like to see him you know, better protected, obviously. I did a full film room on his debut, so if you haven't seen that already, I'd recommend – you know, looking at that for a lot more detail on his play, I pretty much went over all of his dropbacks. So, um, you know, the main thing I'm still waiting to see find out from for him from him is just what's the mobility look like? You know, his game is really predicated on, you know, being able to move around, create those second reaction plays, all that stuff. And also it's a big part of the system, uh, the keepers, et cetera. You know, I tweeted this out like right after watching the film, but, you know, I didn't realize it until I watched it back a second or third time was the play calling was so much different uh, between him and Justin last week. And, you know, Arthur Smith actually confirmed that a couple of days later that, you know, he didn't call certain things in order to protect Russ. Um, he credited his resiliency, I think, for going out there and playing, you know, in a preseason game because he wasn't 100 percent, obviously. Um, so. I, I just need to know, like, what what is his health look like? Like, is his mobility going to get better? Like, how much longer does he need? All that stuff. Um, but just my opinion, um, I, I think if he's going to start week one, he's got to be able to move around, at least like he did last year, the scant scrambles, the bootlegs, all that stuff uh, really have to be on the table. So I'm not necessarily looking for him to go out there and light it up. I just need to see him move around. Uh, I think, you know, continuing to get reps, knock the rust off will be a good thing for him. Um, just in terms of uh, in terms of Justin, you know, I thought the success rate numbers when you really break them down last week weren't terrible. He made some plays with his legs, uh, could have probably made a couple more if not for uh, better execution in front of him from a blocking perspective. Having said that, man, like his process in the pocket last week was really, really tough to watch. Uh, really, his eyes just like not seeing things clearly over the middle. Um, just out of curiosity, like before I recorded this, I just jumped on uh, PFF to see like what his time to throw was because it felt like he was holding the ball forever. Um, it was like 3.93. That's over a half second longer, I think, than he was at last year. You know, Russ, Justin, really last year and over the course of their careers, always like near the bottom of the league in terms of like how quickly they're getting rid of the ball. So I completely understand both those guys are going to hold the ball for a while, but that's an astronomical number man um and then just something i've talked about a lot just decisiveness in the pocket knowing what your eyes need to be um i would love to see you know some bit of anticipation uh whether it's you know throws over the middle throws towards the sideline i thought that was like really lacking last week as well and then kind of like we, what we talked about in the post game like if there are certain concepts where he's just not comfortable going one to two to three or reading it right to left or anything like that like just take off use your legs you're the best athlete on the film uh, and I would just really like to see him, you know, finish the preseason strong. 
um, for whatever reason and kind of let the quarterback competition settle, you know, however it gets settled. So, um, but, you know, I mean, the film is the film. I, I know that sounds kind of negative, but it's three points, whatever, especially in preseason when you're getting a bunch of like spot dropping and just not as much disguise coverages. Defensive coordinators aren't really game plan anything like that. Um, just really want to see better play uh, from those two uh, this weekend. So got to be better Saturday moving forward, et cetera, et cetera. You know, Jalen Warren being out with a hamstring is kind of a bummer. Um, sounds like he could potentially be back week one. We'll see. Um, for, for that reason alone, I'd probably put Najee in bubble wrap, man. Like there's just no reason to go out there, give him, you know, more than a, a carry or two really to, uh, you know, potentially get him banged up. Maybe get Cordero Patterson some carries just to get him in game shape. I know he's missed a lot of time really throughout this process. Uh, I kind of like Jonathan Ward, man. He got banged up last week. Hopefully he can go. I don't really know what his health is like, um, but he would be a guy that I think, you know, if Warren were to miss week one, that I would potentially want to elevate and try to get into a lineup. I, I like what he's provided. I thought P. Brown uh, provided some last moments, nice moments last week as well. I wouldn't mind getting an extended look at Dewan Edwards running back from Georgia. I think he's looked uh, – Pretty solid. He's run really hard whenever he's given the been given the opportunity. The biggest thing for those guys, just trying to help the offense, like stay ahead of the chains, uh, be efficient on early downs, all that stuff. Um, I think the running back room from a 53 man roster perspective is probably set in stone, assuming the health of those guys remains what it is right now. But um, there's definitely, you know, um, practice squad spots, you know, up for grabs. So just from an offensive line standpoint, I think Dan Moore Jr. has been fine in pass protection. Um, Zach Frazier was even better on the rewind than I thought he was live. Kind of just as I anticipated going into the season, man, like he's day one ready. Um, I mean, you can see it on his film. I hate that Nate Herbig, uh, who was having like a better summer than I probably would have given him credit for or anticipated, I should say. Um, I hate seeing a guy like that go down with an injury, especially given the chance that, you know, he could have potentially started. But this is the guy uh, from the pivot day one. I, I think he should have been the starter day one. Um, I'm glad that it's going to work out that way. I just hate the circumstances in which it happened. But he's looked really solid, consistently created movement in the run game, um, been reliable in pass protection. I also put Spencer Anderson back on my 53-man roster projection uh, that I wrote up for Steelers now. Earlier this week, um, you know, even last week, you know, he played some left guard, he played some right guard, he even slid uh, over and played a couple reps at tackle. And to my knowledge, he hadn't been doing any tackle work pretty much uh, throughout this process. You know, he did a little bit last year, but I mean, that's what an ideal, ideal depth piece looks like uh, in my eyes. So he was a guy that I struggled to keep off the 53 man roster. And now he's like firmly on it with the injury to Herbig and assuming he's not, you know, he's not going to be back for the rest of the year or whatever. I also think Mason McCormick's been really strong. Um, you know, I think you see, like, the finisher's mentality on film. I think he's looked a little bit better in space uh, and pass protection than I um, than I originally anticipated. So those are all good things. I think a lot of the young guys on the offensive line um, have, have provided some really nice moments throughout the preseason. Again, some of that is, you know, the competition level definitely needs to be noted. But I think that some of those guys that we wanted to see trend upward are, are trending upward. You know, we can have the Broderick Jones discussion. I'm not going to get too into the weeds here. I don't have much more to add other than what I've already said uh, on here. Steelers now, Twitter, yada, yada. Man, listen, like he's still so far away from where he needs to be technically. Uh, but physically with that brace, like he just doesn't look like he has the juice right now. And that's just I mean, I think it's pretty obvious. Like when you watch the games, I mean, you guys all saw the same game I did last week. Credit to him. I feel like for owning his performance and not, you know, using that as an excuse but if he's not good to go right now from a power perspective and he can't be an above average run blocker, he's, you know, if he's, if he's not, if he's going to be a disaster in pass pro, I think you've at least got to think about going with more of Fawatanu to open the season until he gets healthy. Now that obviously that's obviously assuming that Fawatanu is going to be able to go week one. It sounds like he is going to be good. Um, but offensive line is one of those spots, man, where one guy can completely torpedo a unit, not just the offensive line in the trenches, but also an offense, which is really what we saw last week. So it's it's really tough. You know, this is a guy that the Steelers, you know, really need to be a pretty significant piece on offense. Um, someone that I was really hoping was going to take a, a nice leap in year two. And it can still happen. You know, I think that it, it can absolutely still happen, assuming he gets healthy and gets where he needs to be. I think technically it's still very far away from him being able to reach his potential, but um, it, it's a tough situation to be in. I don't really, I don't have the answers. I know a lot of people think that, you know, the answer is just move him back to left tackle and think he's going to be fine over there. And I just, I, I think that's asinine to look at the tape um, and think that that's going to be a, um, 
you know, just a one one size fits all kind of quick solution to the problem, uh, given what what we've seen on tape. So we'll see. That's where I'm at. I'm hopeful that, you know, things look better this weekend. Um, if they don't, I don't see the point in playing him just until he gets right, because it, it's tough. I don't love what they've done all summer with him from a plan standpoint. I firmly believe that if he's your left tackle of the future, he needs to be playing left tackle. They haven't really necessarily done that. I don't agree with the plan. I just I, I think that there are a lot of issues right now with him, both from a technical and a uh, physical perspective, you know, with the injury. So as far as the receivers, I'd like to see some guys other than Pickens show me that they can win one on one more consistently when given the chance. Still think the pecking order, I guess, is probably the same. Um, you know, you got GP Jefferson's probably the guy in 12 personnel still. Calvin is kind of your third wide receiver. Sounds like Roman Wilson might even start the year on IR. Not 100% sure. I mean, he's missed the whole summer, so he's a guy that's going to be playing catch up really throughout his rookie season, which is really, it's really a bummer uh, the way that that whole situation's played out. I think Scotty Miller, at least on tape to me, has probably been the the other best receiver type um, outside of those guys. But you know, it's kind of tough because his skill set's really similar to what Austin and Wilson already bring. So it's it's just like feels very repetitive to me. Uh, my take kind of remains the same that they need to add at least one guy from the outside. If nothing else, just give me a, guy, a blocking type that plays special teams um, as like a wide receiver five type or somebody that you can give a helmet to and feel good about. Um, I, I would like that very much. I also wanted to point out, uh, I think Des Patrick has done some really nice things. I, I think there's a chance that maybe he sneaks onto the 53-man roster. I've really liked his effort in the run game. Uh, he had that really nice grab uh, off the deflection on that field scramble near the sideline last week uh, as well. So he's done some nice things. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to make the 53-man roster, but you know, definitely, uh, definitely uh, someone that we can at least keep an eye on uh, this weekend against the Lions. So should absolutely still be exploring the trade market as, as well. Uh, I think we're, you know, we saw what two trades or something like that happened yesterday, Jahan Dotson, a couple more. So, um, you know, we're going to see these trades kind of start to um, develop over time. Just now that we're closer to the 53 man roster cut downs, regular season teams putting the final touches on the roster. So, the Steelers absolutely should be doing everything they can to add to that room. I still remain steadfast in that opinion. So um, just kind of switching over to the defense, talk about some depth pieces over there. I think the defensive line depth's honestly been promising. Uh, I think that both Adams, Leal, strong summer, strong preseason. Uh, louder milk is flash as a, as a pass rusher a little bit more than I'm used to seeing, um, even though I think he's kind of struggled at times as a run defender. But I feel like that group as a whole is fine as long as the starters stay healthy. You know, I, I mentioned this in the post game, but I love what I saw from Larry Ogunjobi last week consistently in the backfield. He won on a handful of reps. I thought that you saw him uh, play with a little bit of burst, which is good. I think he looks like he's fully healthy, which is something that we haven't been able to say very often. Um with him in a Steelers uniform, I think Benton's a stud, man. I'm not going to touch on him too much, but he's looked really solid too, especially with uh, now that he's a little bit leaner. I think Logan Lee probably is a guy, uh, Steelers draft pick, that may be on the outside looking in. You know, I feel like he's been really quiet through through two games. Haven't really noticed him live or on film. Potentially a guy that they maybe want to sneak onto the practice squad, but right now it's kind of tough for me to see him making a 53 man roster push, but. We'll see, um, you know, that he's got one more opportunity to kind of prove that. So, um, you know, at Edge, I, I did a film room on Nick Herbig. Uh, I think he's really impressed me, man, just through the first couple games of the preseason. Just really impressed with his overall development. Excited about what he's going to look like in year two. Probably going to come down to Kyron Johnson, Jeremiah Moon for that fourth roster spot uh, at that position. I personally think that Johnson's traits, uh, his explosiveness, his bendiness uh, have really popped more in the preseason. Um couldn't tell you exactly what every practice has displayed, but, you know, this weekend could be, you know, one of those games that kind of swings that battle one way or the other. I put Johnson on the 53 man roster projection that I wrote up earlier this week. We'll see uh, who plays better this weekend. So special teams, obviously going to be a, a big factor there as well. I think that one of the best things that came out of last week, honestly, was that Peyton Wilson's good after entering the concussion protocol was pretty nervous about that. Obviously, Wilson's had a plethora of injuries throughout his football career. Was really uh, glad to see that, you know, he's good. Sounds like he's going to play this weekend. He's going to play a lot this year in general. They're going to have this kind of rotation with him and the landed Roberts, depending on down and distance, I think. So continuing to get his, him reps is a good thing. Um, also have a Peyton Wilson film room up on the members channel. If you guys want to check that out, I, I did a breakdown of uh, some of his reps as well. I thought Mark Robinson was fantastic last weekend. Uh, you know, he's a guy who has a very 
specific skill set. Uh, he does some things really well, but he was one of the last guys on my uh, 53 man roster projection, assuming they keep five backers. But, you know, this is another opportunity for him to kind of, su um, you know, supplant that um, and plant his flag and make the roster again. You know, he's kind of just a guy, been a guy that's been hanging around for a little bit. As far as corners, sounds like B Beanie Bishop's going to try to play. Uh, he missed last week try to solidify a role in the slot for him. Thomas Graham's had some nice moments. I uh, thought he had a chance at an interception too last week that he didn't pull in, but he's making a late push. You know, he was kind of buried on the depth chart to begin the summer, and I feel like he slowly but surely worked his way up. He's an intriguing name to me. Maybe even if he doesn't make the 53-man roster, probably somebody that I would like to see on the practice squad. No one's really throwing in Corey Trice's direction, which is I think is a good thing. I do have some questions on Darius Rush. I have no idea what to think of him and how the Steelers potentially view him. Seems like it's been an extremely quiet summer for him. Um, and I just I don't really know what's going on. I mean, he's not covering punts right now, which is confusing because I feel like they need Gunner help. Um, his background from his days in South Carolina and his skill set with his straight line speed says that he probably should be covering punts. I mean, I, if he's going to be your fifth or sixth corner, that guy typically is a linchpin on special teams. Uh, so I don't, I honestly don't know what to think about Darius Rush. So you guys let me know. Um, seems like it's been a quiet summer, quiet summer, but I'd love for him to flash on Saturday. Um, Rod Watts, continue guy, you know, anytime rookie, getting a plan, getting playing time like he's been getting playing time in the preseason, especially after positional change. Um, that's always going to intrigue me a little bit. So he's another guy that I think uh, right now, I think he's probably on the inside. Uh, has a good track uh, on making the 53, but we'll see what that looks like. I um, think that pretty much wraps up my preview. I'm considering doing like a Q&A type live stream later tonight around 7 Eastern. If there's interest, I might make a post on the YouTube channel and see like how many people could tune into that or would be interested in that. Um, but as always, like you guys drop me a comment on here. If that's something you're interested in or, you know, which guys you'll be paying close attention to uh, tomorrow when the game kicks off. So as always, uh, shout out to our uh, channel sponsor, which is Homage. Uh, go grab your Steelers gear using the link in the description. Uh, my plan is to give some stuff away before the um, season opener. So, you know, stay tuned for that. But regardless if it's, you know, tonight, after the game, tomorrow, whatever, I will check you guys soon. Be sure to enjoy the game.